So basically, when you say PCOS, it's seen as something that you shouldn't have to worry about. It's normal. It's okay. Most women have it. But the thing is, when you mix PCOS with other issues like my anxiety, I think people have gotten used to me panicking about very things they consider very silly things. I worry about going to the market. I worry about leaving the house every morning. I worry about everything. So when I start complaining, like, ah, my period has still still hasn't left to it's been nine days. It'll be like, mm, I can serve a dama. You are just worried. Why don't you wait until 15 days? They'll tell you 15 days is the menu. I it's the maximum Islamically. So if you wait for 15 days, it will go away now. Why are you worried? It's just been nine days. And then it's 10 days and I'm like, ah, it still hasn't gone away. Though. And then it's, mm, we know, we know. But like, has it been 15? Because yes, I've had a doctor who asked that too. He said, how long have you been bleeding for? I said, about nine days now. He said, mm, but it's not 15 days. Go and come back after 15 days. If it's still there after 15 days, then we'll do something about it. Because apparently, unless it's that required maximum, it's not a problem. My name is Habiba Malafaji. I am 25 years old. I am a writer, a poet, and a programs officer with Open Arts Foundation. I love to read. I write a lot. I journal. I was diagnosed with PCOS last year. Uh, PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome. From, I think, I started having symptoms of PCOS right from when I was around 11 years old. I started my period early, which is one of the first defining symptoms. I was 12 at the time. And the thing is, people find it hard to diagnose, at least doctors seem to find it hard to diagnose PCOS because they feel like it's perfectly normal. They say, they tell you, oh yeah, you have irregular periods, that's fine. It will settle with time. But for me, it didn't settle. Around by the time I was 16, I was having issues such as bleeding for two, over 23 days, sometimes even more. I had these spots of acne and rashes everywhere. Sometimes the boils will come out on every part of my body. They will leave scars. No one actually believed it was an issue. So until last year, when I talked to another, a different doctor, because I was seeing this gynecologist who was the first one who talked to me about PCOS. And he didn't actually tell me I had PCOS. What he said was when I complained about all my issues, the period pains, he said, oh, but when I'm funny, it's PCOS, it's just PCOS. Just leave it. It will go away. And then I researched PCOS and I realized every paper I read about it, they said it's not curable. There are treatments, and he's telling me that there is no issue. They said it's the leading cause of infertility in women. And this doctor told me that there's no problem, that I'm just being melodramatic. That's what he told my father, because I went with my father. He said, you know women, they can be so dramatic. Diagnosis is very challenging, because if a patient now comes and um, patient is single, is an adolescent or a teenager, and the patient's problem is menstrual irregularities. We can't go treating for infertility when there is menstrual irregularities. So these patients now would be treated to, um, to regularize her periods. This thing is consistent. Every month, I bleed for 15 days at the least. And then the next month, I'm bleeding again and again and again. So we try to control their periods by putting them on contraceptive pills. As long as menstrual regularity is the problem, their periods are going to be controlled. If I take the contraceptives, it stops for six months and then it's the same cycle over and over again. And I think what most people don't wait, don't actually seek to think about is that periods on a normal day are hard. You are bleeding for six, seven days. 
and that's taking about six, three days from your work days because you are uncomfortable there. Discomfort has always been there, but then multiply this by over three times. It's like someone just turned on a gushing tap. There is no pause. I bleed consistently for 20 days, 25 days. And this man is telling me there is no problem that I am being dramatic. I, I had a job where I have to sit for over six hours, nine to three. I am required to sit down in a library for nine to three, from nine to three. And then, of course, the problem with hormonal drugs, when they prescribe the hormonal drugs, a whole different issue because they make me moody. I get angry for no reason at all. Sometimes I just burst into tears and I can't even tell you why I am crying. I'm just so frustrated. But for me, it's not just that. I'm on medication for anxiety. And anytime I'm being prescribed a different drug for PCOS, we have to sit down and have this discussion about how it might affect the serotonin uptake drugs I'm taking. Because sometimes they do affect each other. And stopping my anxiety medications is not something I ever want to do. Because it just... It's, it's hard. It's hard. And then when it comes to work, when it comes to work, that's a whole different matter. Because I work with open arts where I'm usually hosting events. I'm required to be around people almost 20, almost the whole week. I'm doing something with someone. I'm hosting this event or I'm talking to this person. I need to be at this place. So I can't just sit at home and just lie down and try not to move because that's just what I want to do. I want to lie down, not move, and just wait for the cramps to stop. But I have to get up. And anytime I have to, I'm going to leave the house. I have to first think about, okay, where am I going? How far is it? If I get there, will I be required to sit for a long period of time? If I am going to do that, when will I be back? So that means how many pads will I have to take? If I'm taking those, these pads, do I have to layer them when I put them on? Apparently, the don't, doctors don't want to treat you for PCOS unless you are getting married. <laughs> so that's the first question they ask. Do you, are you getting married? Do you intend to get married anytime soon? I said, no, I'm not getting married. They said, but it's a very expensive treatment. So it's not something you should do if you're not getting married because it's something you can continue living with. If you are getting married, then that means you want to have children. So we can do a treatment plan for you to have children. But otherwise, you, you, you can continue with your life. I couldn't believe it because, so if I'm not having children, I can just continue bleeding for the rest of my life. Just go around bleeding all over the place, having acne, having headaches. In the Nigerian healthcare system, we know government hospitals are, it's a hassle coming to government hospitals, but at the end of the day, that is where the specialists are. You can't go to a small clinic that is close to your house with no specialist gynecologist and expect to get the full treatment. You understand? Because that medical doctor who is probably, probably a medical officer is only going to treat you based on his knowledge. And most of them would dispel, oh, you're young, do not start um, contraceptive pills. But if you come here, um, come into a specialist center, we are going to outline what problem it is you have. And we are going to treat accordingly. And one other issue is that one of the drugs that they prescribe is methanemic acid or tranexamic acid. Most pharmacies will not give you contraceptives if you go to buy them without a prescription. I've been to many pharmacies where when I go and I ask, like, I'm here to get, I'm here for Provera. Do you have Provera? As they will look at me, it's the way they look at you, they look at you up and down and then they go, mm, no, we don't have it. And you know they have it. If I ask for tranexamic acid, they will say, are you pregnant? They no. Did you have a miscarriage? No. Then why do you need tran tranexamic acid? I had someone who asked me, do you even know what tranexamic acid is? I said, yes, I know what tranexamic acid is. That's why I'm asking for it. 
said it's for women who had a miscarriage. I said, I don't have a miscarriage. And the next thing he asked me was, did you have an abortion? I said, no, I did not have an abortion. I do not have a miscarriage, but I am bleeding and I need tranexamic acid. And then he brought up the tranexamic acid when he told me that he didn't have it before. Because the last time I bought Provera, they sold a single sachet for 8,500. And when I told them, like, I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was this expensive. It wasn't this expensive before. Told me, oh, but we export, we, we import drugs now. So you can't expect it to be cheaper. And I told my dad about it. And he had this person who sells, who sold drugs in wholesale. And you went to them and apparently they sell Provera for 1,500 all 30 days prescription of it at wholesale. And they were selling it to me at 8.5 for just a single sachet of it for 10 days. Well, I think a lot of them also present late. Okay, like um, a lot of women do not disclose that they're having these problems. You understand? For example, irregular periods. They present very late. You understand? That's also a barrier. And also seeking um, knowledge from, you know, um, family members and all that. Because just because, oh, I had a relative who had that same problem, but it was not treated. So this same lady would stay at home instead of coming to the hospital. So I think it's all about awareness. When these women know that these facilities are available, they would present to the hospital. And there's also this, you know, there's this um, misconception as well that you can't take um, oral contraceptive pills and that women actually think that, you know, they hide the drugs because they don't want people to know these are the drugs they're taking. But the treatment is totally different. I think we need to be more educated because PCOS affects a lot of women. Almost, it's actually hereditary. So almost in a, in a family, you can fi find five women with PCOS, but none of them are actually diagnosed. And they will go on to have children, and these children will have PCOS, and nobody will know what to do or how to do it. When a, child's, when a girl starts a period around 12, 13 years old, nobody tells her that these are the issues that you might have. This might come up. They just let you, they let you flounder. And when the issues come up, they make it seem like it's your fault. As if nobody else has that problem. So I, I hope that eventually we'll, like, people will advocate for better learning for young girls, especially in secondary schools. I feel like if they have classes on this, if you start your period with the knowledge that yes, when this happens, it's okay. When this happens, it is not okay. I have to tell someone about it. And for medical healthcare practitioners, well, I, I pray for them. I hope they, I hope they learn that they don't know all and they just, they can't be, they can't be that rude and antagonistic to people just because they are ill. I mean, they, they've, they've went to school, they've learned this. So I can't say they, I need them to be more educated. So I hope we learn more empathy for people because you don't know what someone is going through. Someone might be having an issue that you don't know about and all you see is the facade that they show you. So I hope we learn, I hope people have more empathy for people with chronic illnesses, especially PCOS, because when you see a woman on her period and you think it's just a period, you don't know what it entails for her. You don't know how she is coping. So at least try to be a little bit sympathetic. Try to give her a little bit of leeway when it comes to work, especially in workplaces. Because most employers will not agree to you taking two days off every month because you have cramps. So I hope that's, I think, what I hope for. That maybe in time we'll learn to be more empathetic. We'll learn to give more leeway for people with chronic illnesses. And of course, I hope doctors will try as much as they can to listen to someone who, when they say they have an issue, because you are the only one who knows what issue you are having. So that's basically it. Thank you so much.